All right, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Demise, and today I have just checkers with me. G'day, guys. Yeah, uh, he's trying to appeal to our Australian audience. We don't have a lot of those guys. Um, so we missed a trunk updates video before. My bad, but the reason why I did that is because a lot of these things are graphical and they're not really as gameplay oriented. So let's just go quickly over the 25th of May, um, which is the last one that we did th that I missed. And like, to be fair, I'm uploading the tournament stuff and I've got a lot of work to do while I'm trying to catch up from the backlog from the tournament. I'm almost done one more week and I will be ready to make like three videos a day. So don't worry about that. Um, so let's get started. <clears throat> so for the 25th of May, uh, this this is the one that introduced the two the two new gods, uh, Ukokoha and Helikpera. The first thing that you need to know is that these guys I haven't tested yet, and I don't really care about them just yet. Um, as of right now, I don't like their names. Um, Uka actually got switched to Uska for some reason, probably to stop confusion with Okawaru. <clears throat> But yeah, um, as of right now, I will be putting individual god spotlights, as in new series entirely, that go from start to finish of just a game of each god. So that way I can talk all about it as I basically start playing. So those two new guys came um, into the game. Uh, one of them's on summons, which is Hep, and Uka or Uska is the one that is like you're basically playing a MOBA, but in Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. Um, yeah. I'm not going to talk about those too much, but there you go. Um, the stuff that started getting a little bit more interesting, I guess, was Bio's uh, water walking now lasts until you reach shore, even if you drop below the quiet party. So this was a move that you'll actually see in the next trunk vi update that was the beginner for removing drowning from flight running out, which is really good. Uh, Pakelis, Wrath no longer drains player or their devices, but prevents device use for its duration. That's pretty insane. Um, <clears throat> Pekela suppresses Vinestalk's MP draining bite. That's really bad. Um, that means that Pekela's M Vinestalkers are a lot worse. But I guess that makes sense because Mana Regen is there. Pekelis no longer gives potions of magic to mummies. It's fine. Uh, this next one is a change that Ultraviolent got into the game because he reported it. Shadow Step can't be used, can now be used to step into invisible enemies' monsters. Sorry, invisible shadows. So that means that the uh, Ghost Moth can be Shadow Step too if you can see invisible. But eh, it's not a big deal. Let me see. Uh, monsters hated by your god can be temporarily enslaved. Gozag will no longer attempt to bribe your own minions. High Elf, Deep Elf Archers no longer fire in melee, so that makes them a little bit more annoying. Hellions no longer have fire resist, arc hold, minus. Probably make it so that the Hellfire, the whole, oh, I'm a fire demon, um, isn't as reinforced. Unrandoth's new changes. Uh, Damnation, which is, I believe, the Hellfire one, right, Checkers? That's correct. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't doesn't provide resistances, but doesn't more damage. Fire start and frostbite now provide immunity to fire and cold clouds. Yeah, that makes sense. Blah blah blah. Olgrab has a pl fixed plus nine enchantment. That's pretty good. Ring of Octopus King now has an interaction with the Octopus King Ring. That's pretty cool, I guess. But ultimately, a trident is a trident, and it sucks. So no worries. Sword of Zongle Drock, no one ever actually uses, and the Mace of Variability, no one actually uses. The Amulet of Harm is no longer evil, no one cares about that. Corrosion Slaying penalties now apply to unarmed and auxiliary attacks, uh, that's fine I guess. That is interesting, because that means that it, Corrosion didn't work on unarmed, which is pretty cool. But uh, I guess it's been removed now, so it's too late. Uh, <clears throat> so now, from now on permanently, every single weapon will be listed as branded, which is really cool. Um, it was like, I think, half, half and half. I think you used to be able to see sometimes if you were wielding a weapon or something. Well, how, how did that work before, Checkers? Uh, you would always be able to see the enemy's weapon if you exavied over it. But in the case when a couple of enemies came into view at the same time, their brands wouldn't individually be called out in all circumstances. Uh, okay, so it's just a bit more clarification. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, uh, Elemental Enhancers no longer penalize casting spells the opposite elements. So that's just a move away from... Um, <clears throat> Sorry, that's just a move away from the old cross-training thing. It's just a bit of consistency, I guess. Uh, Sigatovi's, Sigatovi's Embrace no longer degrades when taking damage. No one uses that spell. Simulacrum got nerfed again because, well, that thing is broken, but I really wish it wasn't because Simulacrum is sick. Dazzling Spray got nerfed. Its damage is slightly lower. It's still a good spell. It doesn't matter. Uh, 
tiles, jewelry is being completely replaced. That sucks because I keep thinking that all of them are, all the um, amulets look like freaking uh, on Randarts and Randarts now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am not a fan of that change, but whatever. Uh, mutant beasts now look different. You can see I'm mousing over them now. Blah 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 blah. Yep. Uh, zombies look different now. It's kind of scary. Bat bat skeletons look a bit more like uh, like caustic shrikes, but we'll, we'll see what caustic shrikes look like now. Low level demons have new tiles, so that's uh, up here. This is the zombie ones. I'll let you pause on them. Uh, X greater than whatever whatever. Being in water stops. I have actually no idea what that means. Player being silenced no longer prevents monsters from shouting. Muted monsters once again bristle with rage. Sheep now bleat, and inscribing an ice item with ice no longer crashes the game. So as you can see, this is exactly why I didn't want to do this video uh, for the first one. There's literally nothing of value other than graphical changes and two new gods that I haven't touched yet. So there was basically no point in me making this video. As you can see, I covered the entire content in about five minutes. So let's move on to today's one, which is a little bit more interesting. So, uh, hi crawlers, summer's in full swing today, or it's winter for us, but our winter is still probably colder, uh, hotter than your summer, so it's fine. Um, so yeah, they added a couple of new stuff, uh, new things that I've taken a couple of looks at, but I don't really care too much for. Uh, first things first, you can actually read stuff off the floor now, not the inventory. You don't need to be in your inventory. It's slightly less, it's less tedious, but it really doesn't make too much of a difference. It's only in the off chance that you're on 52 slots and you want to read a scroll of identify. But generally speaking, you don't want to be at 52 slots anyway, so eh, whatever. Right. <clears throat> um, it's no longer possible to drown from flight expiring, so this is what I talked about before. If you fly and uh, your flight gets cancelled, you take heavy drain until you reach solid ground again, but you're in emergency flight mode. It's still impossible to drown. It's still possible to drown if a flying transformation expires, but that's going to be removed pretty soon, right? Yeah. Well, as soon as someone does the work, anyway. All right. Well, that's good. Uh, let's see. So they changed the way that the uh, ally system looks. Not it works the same. Now, um, enemies that are allied are highlighted in green, and enemies that are neutral to you are highlighted in yellow. I think, or is it white? I think it's white. <clears throat> White? Okay, yeah. And enemies that are... Which one were the red ones? Are there any red ones? I <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> I thought there was one that was like durably summoned as red. Is that, is that uh, correct? Yeah, you, you're right. Durably summoned would be red. Yeah, so when God Wrath and stuff hits you, um, it's red. But that's... Uh, it's it's confusing for me because I, I see them as halos and it really confuses me, but uh, over time you get used to it, I guess. Um, so this one's a really important one, I guess, uh, for a lot of people. Lair is now six floors and Slime is now five. So Lair's been cut by two floors and Slime's been cut by one. So Slime being cut is not a big deal because you always dive Slime anyway, but Lair cutting six floors cuts you down by approximately 10k ex experience, which means that instead of being level fifth, almost level 15 by the end of Lair, assuming a full clear, you instead get about level 14 and a little bit. Is that correct? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, so um, that could be dang that could be bad because by itself, lair being shortened is not bad. Um, I never had a problem with lair being eight floors. Uh, I don't think anyone really has a problem with lair being eight floors. But removing it again, no one really has a problem with having less. I don't think it really would affect anyone other than complete new guys who get confused by the wiki saying that's eight. And also those that feel like they don't have enough EXP in the game. Um, that It might affect those kind of players. I remember I used to be one of those players where I would consistently try to go to other places to get more EXP. But if, I, I suppose in the tournament and such, they realize that having layer, eight layer floors is not as necessary. The game's being won at lower and lower XLs over time. It used to be that most wins were about XL27, XL25. Nowadays it's more like XL23 to 21, um, depending on how much you kill in Zot. But either way, this this change does make it a little bit harder for you to get through the early game. Uh, sorry, through to the mid game. But hopefully, it won't be too much of a problem. Again, I, I can see it being a real big problem for fielders and for octopodes who really need that exp to continue going. Um, I'm still waiting on that fielder rework. What do you think, Check, Is that ever going to happen? A fielder rework? Oh, you no, you better be wishing. Not not a rework, but just a buff, like. I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion that I've mentioned a couple of times in the videos, where instead of having it so that when you die you lose a full EXP bar, just make it so you're heavily drained. 
Like it makes it having less EXP means having less HP, and having less HP is the worst thing in the world, especially in a field. I don't. I really hate it. If yeah, look, I mean, it's a it's a pretty big penalty to lose an XL when you die, but then again, it's better than dying and the game being over. So well, I the thing know. is, you wouldn't die unless you had if you didn't have uh, double digit health in Zot, like. If you actually had enough health to survive, then dying should have a huge penalty, I agree. But when you die in, like, two turns from an enemy that runs faster than you and you can't blink away, it's really hard to justify them being alive. Like, them being even in the game. Like, a lot of the deaths that I had in um, my my one, I know a, cu- a couple of them could be avoided, but there were just ones that I actually died in one hit. Um, like, it was really, it was, it was just frustrating. But anyway, that's beside the point. Felids... Not going to get buffed anytime soon. Confirmed by devs, checkers. Hmm. Checkers, the dev, I guess. So, gods, a couple of other things. Uh, yeah. Uka Ya is now Uska Ya. I'm only going to call him Uka. <laughs> I don't actually know what to call him. Um, but it kind of is funny that these guys' names are so stupid that even the gods, even the devs, and the people who are writing this stupid changelog, they don't even bother using the name. They just use U and H. It's ridiculous. Like, why do you even need those large names? You could have just called the guy Hep. Hep would have been fine. Like, you didn't need him to have 16 characters. Like, you didn't need Uska to have, like, five vowels. Like, you didn't need that many vowels. You could just have, like, one. Usk. Uski. Uski. There you go. Ruski. Yeah, anyway. I've got to say that the, both of these names are a little hard on the tongue. It's all right when you have a couple, like your Redmond Mulu or whatever it is. It's uh, your most of the god names are pretty easy to pronounce, and I think that helps with their flavor, especially. I think that a rename should be done. Uh, honestly, like Dithmenos is a nice sounding name. Pekelis mm-hmm. is a nice sounding name. Gozag is a nice sounding name. Uh, what's the other guy? What's his name? Uh, Quasilal. That's a sick sounding name. Uskas Gibbera and Hepliakwinlingna. It's not a good name. Like, you can't even speak about it. It's frustrating. Hopefully they get a rename before the trunk starts because I don't want to be pronouncing their name anymore. Uh, but yeah, these are a bunch of changes that I can't really go over because I have no idea what they mean. Um, battle mage damage got increased. I don't know what that means. Uh, and hexes is being changed. I don't. I also don't know what that means. Um, anyway, so Nemelexabeth's abilities now cost invocations, not evocations. This is a really interesting point to make because originally they said that they didn't want Pekelis to interrupt, interfere with uh, Nemelex's gameplay. Now it seems that they're making it so that Nemelex isn't interrupting Pekelis's gameplay. It's kind of interesting to say uh, to see what's going on. So now that Nemelex's abilities scale off invocations, it means that there's going to be a significant shift in, I guess, the meta for what you pick as Nemelex. So Hillock is suddenly a lot better at Nemelex than, uh, say, for example, Deep Dwarf. Oh, no, not Deep Dwarf, sorry. Kobold used to be. Kobold used to be my go to guy for Nemelex. Uh, Felid's pretty good, but nowadays I think Hillock would be really sick. Uh, what else has a good invocations one? Uh, Demon Spawn would be sick. Uh, are there any other ones that have really high um, invocations but not evocations? Mm, I think High those Elf? are the main ones. High Elf gets better. Yeah, High Elf is significantly better with Nemelex now uh, than before. But it, it's interesting, but I don't know if that's really great because... I don't know. I, I kind of like the utility that Nemlex gave. So do you have the reasoning for that, check, Checkers? Like, do you actually know uh, the reason? Well, hmm. <clears throat> I'm actually just checking out. I'm seeing if cards actually are scaling based on evocations or if they're still or if they're on invocations now. Oh, so you're saying that the invoca- the decks themselves are actually evocations, but the invocations is abilities. Let's let's confirm that. You, uh, is there no, sorry, can... every, everything is running off invocations now. So yeah, Dex okay. is a purely invocation system. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a good idea, though. I like, think it's mostly a good idea. Dex, uh, a f- change which is also going to be discussed, is that Dex are only a Nemelex item now. You won't find them in the dungeon. Oh, you can sometimes find them in the dungeon, right? Uh, I read uh, this a little bit earlier. But yeah, uh, essentially it means that um, Nemelex is now the god of Dex, and you're not really going to get Dex otherwise. And also he's an invocations god now. Which is yeah, kind of so sad. The decks don't have anything to do with evocations now, except that's what they've historically used. So yeah. I think it's just bringing Nemelex's abilities into line with every other god in the game. I don't really know if I like that, though. Nemelex's abilities are the only ones other than Bacellus now that actually were unique in that they took up inventory slots. Um, I feel like that should have been evocations, just for flavor purposes, but I guess whatever. 
right? Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like Nemelex was that weird and wonderful god. Now that he's the same as everyone else, it's a bit less weird. But yeah, Kellis is too industrial, I suppose. He works too well for it to be weird. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's... In, a lot of people love that about Netflix, how there's all these decks and they do amazing things, but it was also a bit of a problem in that it was Nemelex is almost a game within the game. There's all these mechanics and abilities that aren't anywhere else. I mean, you have an ability like Nemelex's Mercenary card, which just doesn't exist in the rest of Dungeon Call for about four major versions now. Yeah, so fair. you had all these problems <clears throat> with Nemelex where you're really almost playing a different game and there's all these new mechanics that don't really make sense elsewhere. And there's well, a lot of rationalization going on, I guess, in these trunk updates to try and make Nemelex a, a little bit more of a modern crawl component. Uh, well, I guess, but you did take away his niche and you gave it to Pikellus. It's kind of the same. It's kind of the same reasoning I had with Draconians and Gargoyles. Draconians basically got the shit under the stick. When are you gonna? When are they gonna get rid of that stupid line that says the vestibule wings won't fit in your stupid body armor? Huh? When is that gonna get rid of? <laughs> Because ask me. gargoyles, huh, my vestibule wings fit straight through that plate armor. Oh, wait, they're fully grown wings that let me fly permanently. Oh, wait, I can still wear body armor. Logic. It's gone. Makes no sense. Yeah, it's, it's, the lore is pretty bad, but I think in, in terms of balance, it's reasonably good. Gargoyles you could let, a I think you could let. Permaflight. They draw, drawbacks. What? They're, yeah, they're only... They have way less health. <laughs> Yeah, too bad they have more armor than any Draconian could ever possibly imagine. Better aptitudes, better... Con uh, sorry, not better aptitudes, better uh, resistances to everything, including poison, electricity, petrification, torment, what RN, permafly, yeah, that too. Um, can't, don't have to breathe, I think. Oh, wait, no, they do have to breathe. That's mm -hmm. surprising. I don't know why that's the case. But, like, I don't know. It feels like Gargoyle has got... Like, Draconian's got the shit under the stick so badly. Uh, anyway, anyway, we need to move on. Um, Death Meadows Shadow Step, no one cares. No one uses that ability, right? Vampire players can now berserk and transform when merely satiated without needing to be full. That is really good because that means that Vampire Berserker is suddenly a slightly more cool thing. Uh, getting from satiated to full takes a buttload of satiation. It needs a lot of potions of blood. Um, and berserking immediately takes you out of that. So, yeah, now Vampire Berserking is actually a real thing. Vampires are trog might actually be pretty good because vampires are undead and they get all that cool stuff that Trog has. And they also get to be undead. That's pretty cool. What do you got to say about that, Checkers? Uh, I just checked my stats and I've played zero vampire games online, so I'm going to pass on this. Oh, yeah. So Checkers is one of those people. He's like, good I have no people. idea what's going on. Yeah. Okay, fair. I'm not going to judge you for that. <clears throat> New monsters. Oh, wait, no. Demonic Guardians can't be angered by players. Cool. That means that, like, AoE spells. Shooting through them and st straight up attacking them doesn't do anything, apparently. That's kind of cool. Uh, New enemies. I don't really understand the reasoning behind this one. The Mela uh, Melee. How do you pronounce that? Melee. That sounds about right. Melee. Yeah, so they're bees, and they smite, and they sting, and they come in packs of three. Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. What the fuck? Why would you add this enemy? Like, you know what's a really dangerous enemy? Bees. How do we make them worse? Stick an orc priest on them. This is just another one of those enemies that is hilariously frustrating to fight because they move faster than you. Wait, do they move? They, I'm assuming they move faster than you, right? Uh, yeah, they're melee, too. Yeah, uh, so they, so they, these aren't going to appear in early B packs. They're only going to appear in late D packs when killer bees are a bit not so scary. Okay, fair. I don't really know if I like stinging and smiting at the same time, though. I don't know. I don't understand the reason behind it. Just like, why? Dear God, why? Just have Spriggan B riders, man. You don't need extra enemies that do more things. They're more gimmicky than before, and they come in parts of three. Thank God we have those. Oh, if I ever die to one of those, I'm going to be mad. Because it's just like another another one of those situations where an enemy here is completely broken. Let's put more numbers into the game. More, 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 more. Remember Shock Serpent, oh, guys? Watch out. Uh, their, their tile is currently a B with a few red dots on it, so they're very easy to mistake. Yeah, I saw them. I thought they removed Bs when I first, when I first played them. I thought they updated the tile, and I just attacked them, and they were smiting me, and... Oh, by the way, they can also heal each other. It doesn't fucking make any sense why they're like that, but whatever. Oh, God. Um, Asterion's weapon is gone. Uh, it's replaced by Greater Servant of Macleb. That's pretty bad, uh, but also kind of good. reason why it's good is because now 
Asterion won't freaking red drain you in like 10 seconds flat. But the bad thing is he's going to be summoning executioners and shit, and that's really scary. That's really uh, scary. Will the executioner ever be neutral? Like, because he fucks up the the club thing. No, uh, computer players don't get that. <sighs> that's that's disgusting. They should just have it like a one percent chance that he just summons an ally and just kills himself. That'd be so good. Like, because that's I... that's that's basically the McCleb experience. Like, he you can't have him be not McCleb. Like, you can't have him use McCleb abilities and then not use my like not suffer the same shit we have to go through. They should have just accidentally summon an ally. Like, come on. It's good. Good shit. It, it's a dumb gimmick, but I'm in favor. Of what? Giving them uh a chance. I think it would be quite funny. It would be funny, because it's like, that's why you don't pick McCleb. The one reason. The only reason, really, because McCleb's so good. Anyway, Norris is gone. Zethua swiped his paralyzed before it left. Um, Norris was a fucking annoying enemy to fight. He always had a buckler and like a short sword, but he almost did like all your health and damage. Because he's invisible, confuses you, slows you, and smites you at the same time. And paralyzes you as well. Um, I don't really understand the reasoning behind putting para- uh, paralysis back in the game. As I'm aware, paralysis is a absolutely shit status, considering it continuously... It basically causes you to die uh, 90% of the time, and it's not fun. Like, because it's the one thing that could occur... I think it... No, it doesn't. this one doesn't pierce through your MR, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's resisted by MR. Yeah, but anyway, if you don't have MR, it paralyzes you, and you're not allowed to do anything except press enter until you die, essentially. God forbid he actually cast paral- uh, paralysis on you twice, then you're fucked. Like, Zathor is a pretty... He's not a very strong enemy. He's kind of like a gold dragon. Uh, a bit weaker than a gold dragon, actually, because he can't throw poison at you as well. But the fact that now he can paralyze you is that... It basically means that for 20 turns, you don't get to play the game, and he gets to just kill you. That's not fun at all, and that reprioritizes magic resistance as the most important resistance in the game, and that's annoying. I don't like it. So that's my opinion on the game. What about you? Uh, I think it's great. Xtar Hua, is how I've always pronounced it, has ne- never been a particularly impressive enemy, so I think this is going to make him much scarier. I don't understand why they couldn't just make him fear, though. Like, you could use a, a, a status that wasn't so overbearingly annoying. They could, you could have them fear and slow. Like, at least then I could teleport or blink. With paralysis, I don't get shit. I don't get even, like... It's like, I literally just get a press enter. That's all I get to do for the next, like, 10 seconds. And the worst thing is that paralysis lags you out for some reason, so it makes it all the worse. Anyway, uh, this is the one that you have. Um, various genders have... Various uniques have been gender-adjusted. So the following, if I remember correctly, have been switched to female. Uh, Sabojo, Urug... Uh, Ijib, uh, hang on, I got this, hang on. Sabojo, Ilz, um, Ijib, Urug, probably, um, the troll dude, what's his name? Per- Purgy? That's probably uh, a female. Snog. Oh, Snog's, why is Snog a female dude? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, Izel, who else is a female now? Uh, Extra Hewer. She's he's a female too. What the fuck, man? Dude, that's a dude. It's totally and a dude. There's one more as well. Grinder is now a lady. That makes no sense. Grinder's a dude. Unless you're running a Dark Souls reference, then I'm okay with it. Are you running a Dark Souls reference, Checkers? Intentionally, but I will happily you take it. You fucking scum. So Checkers is the one involved with that. Everyone hates him now. He's an SJW. Isn't that right, Checkers? Yeah, that's right. It's my it's putting this political agenda into the secret game. Uh, also worth noting, all the pan lords are now neuter as well. After Why'd you do that? Before. They can't swing their big old demonic pecker on your face anymore, man. Why? They still have them. They'll just be neuter. What, so they just can't have babies? They're beyond gender. Just ornamentary phallus. Or- yeah, I ornament- love, I like that phrase. Ornamentary phallus. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, it's a pretty small change, I guess. But uh, if It's not a small change, apparently. It's not yeah, a small change. Uh, a lot so of people my are mad about it. was pretty much just that uh, it was probably only about 30% of the uniques in the game were currently female, uh, which is a bit weird. There's no particular reason for it. Everyone who's just made uniques in the past has decided to make a man. So a couple of the older, less loved uniques, at least less loved in terms of the devs who created them are still around. I just swapped over to ladies and we're sitting in a slightly better gender balance now, which I think is... A small change, but something which is a little bit better for the game. 
Well, there's a lot of opinions that um, have been discussed, so I'm going to just briefly go over them, and then I'm going to add which one. I'm going to throw in at some point my own opinion, but I'm not going to tell you which one is which. So a lot of people are arguing that the uh, gender of the game is being distorted. There's an unnecessary political sway towards uh, you know having a gender equality thing. Um, there's a couple of people that argue that fem- uh, fantasy is also a sexist game uh, genre by nature because it generally has dudes saving chicks, and that's, I guess really undisputable because it's what happens 99% of the time. Uh, you guys ever watched Dragonlance? Remember that one? Remember Lorana? Whatever her name was. Remember uh, the other chick? Oh wait, she was a feminist. Never mind. Um, and this is my one. Okay, I guess I won't lie. The problem is, like, that I find at least, is that uh, each each female unique as it stands has a really powerful image in my mind. So you've got people like uh, Natasha, who is a female cat. I guess it could be male, but I guess a female cat's a bit more interesting for a witch, generally speaking. You've got Ilsu, who is a f- mermaid. Um, like, it's very iconic, I suppose. You've got Vashnia, who's the strong captain of the guard, and she's female. You've got uh, Marjorie, who's a sick lad, uh, leading a band of dudes. Uh, who else you got? you got Robin, who's leading a band of dudes. Uh, let me think. Who else we got? Who else are the the really cool ones that I'm thinking of? Oh, you got Sonya, who's a really sick Arachne. enemy. Who? Arachne, the spider one. Oh yeah, Arachne. Like all the uniques that are female have really like cool ideas, and generally speaking, all the male ones that you've switched over are the bland ones. I don't really like the fact that all the bland ones, all the ones that are like kind of like. I guess the ones that you feel are like old friends, but you generally don't consider to be incredibly like threatening and insane in your mind. Like Ijib, when you see him in the early game, like before he used to have like wants and shit, but now he doesn't really have it as much. He's kind of like just meeting an old guy on the, like, Hey, I remember you and you're dead. Like, I don't really know if having them changed as females really that important. I feel like if you'd moved the ones that were gender like neutral, like the ones that like Izel and stuff, that really you can't tell if it's a male or female. Like, I guess moving those ones are completely fine, but I don't really get changing Urug, uh, Snorg, and Ijib. I think those guys were just males. Like, honestly. It's really hard for me to consider them to be female now, like this late in the game. Like, Ijib's always been a dude. He's, he looks like a dude. His tile is a dude. His description sounds like a dude. Same with Urug. And for all you feminists out there, if you're arguing against me, you're basically arguing that uh, females can be brutish, disgusting orcs as well, which I, I get you. I guess you could want, but like, it just doesn't fit with the character, the description that they have right now. I feel like if you want to switch their gender, you need to remake them completely, at least from the lore perspective. I think that's probably why your change was so un, unwanted, Checkers, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think a lot of people want beautiful ladies as the only sort of ladies in a game. It's not really about beautiful ladies. It's just that you've got you you changed the gender, but you didn't change anything else about them. So it's really hard to justify changing the gender. You know what I mean? I think. Uh, look, in some ways, that was a deliberate decision on my part when I picked out the uniques to change. Uh, this, sh- I think, there should be female uniques in this game which aren't specially female in any way. They just are uniques that happen to be female in the same way that you have a unique like Ijib who used to be just happened to be male. Uh, let me think. Yeah, I guess, I guess. But it's just got to have like that. I don't, I, don't, I don't like it when changes happen. I don't like it. I, don't, I really don't like them unless they're good for the game. And I don't see this one to be that good. But I don't see it to be bad. Like I'm one of those people that are generally neutral. I care mostly about the design decision rather than the fact that there's gender politics and shit. I actually prefer that. I prefer if you just made it so that a whole bunch of new females join the cast, uh, and they could be bland and uninteresting, rather than making our current bland and uninteresting uniques, well, bland un- and un- uh, bland uninteresting and female. Like, I don't know. It just felt unnecessary. But that's Checker's thing. Um, if some dev is going to revert it, I guess that's going to happen. But it might probably won't. So there you go. Ijib's now female. God, that sucks. My uh, my fantasy, my homoerotic fantasies are ruined. Now they're actually hetero, and I don't know how to deal with that. Anyway, thousand apologies. Yeah, what are you gonna do? You can't do it. Or you should, ma- or you should make it so that they're all like vegans. 
Like make Hoffman <laughs> vegan. Just be like, I don't eat meat. Just oh, that could be a really sick unique dude. Can we do that? I'm not sure if Crawl has the ability to mark a unique as vegetarian. Well, you'd have to make a new one because that's what vegans do. They they forged new labels for themselves. I only eat I only eat chocos, for example. I'll get back to you on this. I'll get back to you. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's been uh, enough of that. St- Salamander Stormcall has been removed. Thank God, those guys are annoying as fuck. Those guys are the ones that firestorm you. Box of Beasts and Sack of Spiders no longer have charges, but have a fixed 25% chance of disintegrating, disintegrating after each use, and they now stack. Not a fan, um, honestly. Not a fan of having them disintegrate more often. I feel like um, the fact that they disintegrate once every four times means that essentially you could either have one shot or you could have like 300. And I don't know if that's a really great idea. I, I don't know. Uh, I do like the fact that they stack, though. Uh, it means that basically they're auto pickups from now on, no matter what, 100%. They basically will be on auto pickup unless you're going with Rue and you've sacrificed love, or you're going with Okawara and you just don't care, or you're a mage, but even then you would still pick it up. So are there any uh, reasonings for that one, Chagas? Uh, it was basically just uh, because the previous change, which was changing uh, the failure rate to be reduced with increasing evos, we encourage people to save them forever. Uh, this way, uh, they're a little bit weaker, but they're a lot more consistent with how they work now, which I think is a benefit overall. I feel like having the, having the percent chance so high is not desirable, though. It means that they break after like three times, no matter how good your evo is. Kind of uh, yeah, I, I agree the chance is a bit high. Uh, you also know Wanderers can occasionally start with these, uh, which I think is a reasonably weak start now that you can mainly use them two or three times before they break. Yeah, okay, maybe if they went down to like 15%, I'd be a lot happy about it, like legitimately. I think moving it down to 15% would be re- pretty reasonable. I don't know how the actual, what were the old numbers at like good evos? Do you know? Mm, they previously lasted for four to 13 times from memory. Yeah, that seems a lot more reasonable. Having them as at least four. Like, make them so that they have a 25% chance after a fourth use or something like that. That'd be a little bit more, I guess, respectable. Make them a bit more consistent. Like, I I don't like it when things break after one use, even though they shouldn't. That's generally annoying for me. Anyway, um, elemental evokers have been differentiated a bit more, so the uh, the lamp of fire has been buffed. It's basically a shotgun now. Um... It almost it always generates strong fire clouds, and the damage has been increased quite significantly. But um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't uh, create the fire elementals. And the fan of gales now guarantees a knockback, I believe, uh, and is slightly stronger when pushing away. But it doesn't get the uh, air elementals anymore. And the fire of floods does less damage on impact, but the uh, water elementals cha- elementals changed. Sorry, st- stay the same. And the Stone of Tremor has been removed. So this is a couple of good changes and eh, kind of changes. Uh, the Lamp of Fire is really fun to use now. Um, like, at least at low EVO, because it still feels like a high EVO um, Lamp of Fire. It's just that now you don't get the uh, bonuses of the elementals. The Fan of Gales is slightly better, um, because you can guarantee its use, I believe, uh, to knock a dude away. But the And the Vile of Flood is pretty much exactly the same as before. Generally speaking, the impact damage was good, but it wasn't amazing. It was, it was decent, and the elementals are still good. Stone and Tremors got removed, and everyone can see why, because the Stone and Tremors is shit. It's basically like a level 3 shadow, and it sucks. And the stuff it summons also sucks. Even at high evo. Uh, Checkers, you got anything to say about that? Uh, no, I think it's overall a bit of a nerf to the evokers, because they're all doing a little bit less now. But I do think differentiating them is great, and the Stone of Tremors was always the, the ugly child. Well, the Lamp of Fire and the, the Fan of Gales, I I would actually say at low EVO is better, don't you think? Like, um, I Definitely at low EVO it's better, but at higher EVO is when you could get two or three Fire Elementals coming out, you had a really powerful Elemental Evoker. Yeah, I don't know. Nerfing stuff that seems okay to me is kind of annoying, but whatever. If anything, they should just buff mages. It's kind of a frustrating cycle where you see, at least from my perspective, where you see the player getting nerfed and the monsters getting buffed. It's like, why are you making the game harder, mate? It's no reason. Just keep the game at the same level of difficulty. If the players get better at it, so what? They're the players. Like, just let They'll die. We, we all have a limited lifespan. We'll die. The next generation will be just as shit, so don't worry about it. Like, I don't, I don't enjoy it when the game gets harder for no reason. Like, I don't know. Is that against the defi- design philosophy or something? Like, the game well, seems to. It's not against the design philosophy, but I don't think it's it's making it harder. Just 
as a goal in and of itself. And I think a lot of these changes are keeping the game fair as well. If they were making the game harder unfairly, I would have a problem with it. Well, what about Iron Giants? <laughs> what about, what about Shock Giants Serpents? Demise? What about Shock Serpents, dude? How the fuck is that fun? Checkers, you can tell me that when you win a goddamn game in my tournament, huh? <laughs> hey, do you want to be the captain of my next team, by the way? I'm not sure if I should be. I got 7% of your clan's points. Oh, not, no, no. You're not going to be part of the main team. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not offending you by any point. But I think that by next... I think next um, tournament, I'm not going to accidentally haphazardly add everyone in at the last second, like I did with you and our KR Freak. I'm actually going to try to plan a team out. And uh, I don't know if there'll be space, unfortunately. But I am really... I would be really hoping that some someone I trust, like yourself, or maybe Bob the Cannibal, would want to run my secondary team because yeah the first one this time around didn't come it didn't come to fruition didn't happen uh but next time might so what are you thinking yes no i'm a little bit hurt but i'm also the chance for a little more power is always appealing how could you be hurt by that you actually had to admit on like on the front page that you didn't do shit no <laughs> you actually had to do that i don't know why you would be hurt at all you would actually be helped i would save you from being put on the spotlight i don't want to put you on the spotlight for being the bad one of the crew in fact even in the tournament video n1000 called you out he called you out he actually said yeah this checkers guy he doesn't know what the hell he's doing he's got like 10 points on him <laughs> but anyway that, that detracts from the point of this video uh, amulets of harm are still crap uh, they buffed them but they're still garbage so doesn't matter um i don't think there's ever going to be a real number that would ever make it so that amulets of harm are good they're always going to be either too shit or too strong. Um, they'll never be balanced, and I think they should be removed, honestly. Um, increasing damage taken is stupid because the game is so spiky as it is that uh, increasing spike damage is just ridiculously bad. And increasing damage is unnecessary because, generally speaking, you have enough damage. Also, like, just, that's it. Like, there's no... Amulet of Harm doesn't increase your survivability. It actually makes it worse, and I don't think that's ever going to be anything that anyone's going to pick up with any use. Um, maybe you could say it's for speedrunning, but it, even then it wouldn't really be because real-time speedrun would just be tabbing faster and turn count speedrun would be resting more because of the spike damage. It doesn't make any sense. I don't think it's a good idea. What do you think, Chagas? Do you think there actually there's actually a spot in the game for it? Uh, I think it's tricky. Uh, you could draw a comparison with the Vorpal brand, which increases damage by a flat amount, but is much less preferred than, preferred than Flaming or Cold by almost every player. Oh, unless you're fighting an orb of fire, then you actually yeah. prefer to have wobble weapons. Fun fact. Yeah, I mean, in some cases, I mean, frost would still be good as well, right? No, it actually does less damage, I believe. Huh. Well, yeah, okay. So because orb of fire is a orbs of fire, as always. Orbs of but fire I think are actually right. uh, resistant to cold and immune to fire. And they're oh, also resistant yeah. to electricity. I know this because I've fought so many goddamn orbs of fire that I've actually somehow learned to remember what they do. Which is surprising. Normally, most people just think of them as big hunks, hunks of fire that mutate you. But they actually have a couple of resistances that can be uh, ignored. Chopping is surprisingly good against them. Uh, it does 16.67 extra percent damage, right? Yeah, that's that? it. Yeah, and, uh, and I think the fact that the, the brand is just this flat percentage increase makes it sort of boring and not very interesting. Well, to be fair, flaming and frost walls are kind of boring. Well, yeah, but they have an elemental effect which can't be directly compared with numbers. And I think... Oh, That's but, a problem the Amulet of Harm has as well. It's just a number buff. And like you say, it's going to be either too good or too ignorable. I think, honestly, you should push to remove it, dude, in the next trunk update. It's never going to be used. I'm it's not a dev never device. going to be used. I'm not a dev. Well, you managed to change freaking genders. No one bat annihilated that shit. So you basically are a dev. You can make whatever you want. Everyone's going to accept yeah, if, it. If only well, that was true. But you managed to push that. That was actually Checkers, guys. Checkers did that. I saw it. I was confused. I was like, did fun. Okay, I'm not going to out you out on the video. I'll out, I'll, I'll out that. I'll talk about it later. Okay, anyway. Um, player created non opaque clouds now vanish instantly from. Oh, shit. Hang on. Rods can now be gained from miscellaneous acquirement instead of staff acquirement. So that just moves it to that staff. You can't. Um, Acquire staffs for non trogites but now you can get rods. For, sorry, more consistently, which is amazing because on an evoker, I hate the worst thing in the world is acquiring a staff and then getting a staff because a rod is way better than a staff. 
So basically, yeah, it's a buff for uh, rod users, particularly. Um, amulets of Haunt... Oh, sh God damn, I'm getting confused now. Player created non-opaque clouds now vanish instantly outside LOS instead of just dissipating four times faster. This is a nerf to anyone who uses Freezing Cloud, Poison Cloud, Mephitic Cloud, Conjure Flame, and Ring of Flame. No, Ring of Flame will never work. What other ones are there? Uh, Storm Clouds uh, from Nemelex. That, that gets nerfed. Let me think. Are there any other ones? Um, it was pretty much Poison Cloud and froze, Freezing Cloud. Yeah, those ones. And Conjure Flame. It's kind of frustrating that that's the case, but uh, I guess it removes off-screen kills. Hopefully it doesn't make too much of a difference, but honestly, I don't really like the way it works because, I don't know, I don't like it, the fact that it instantly dissipates. I'd rather just stay one turn after dissipate, like after you leave LOS, and then it dissipates after that, because it kind of like makes it so that you have to be in range of everything when you're using Cloud Spells, which is kind of the opposite reason why you would use a Cloud Spell in the first place. Cloud Spell is supposed to create distance, but now it's forcing the distance to be closer. And it's not like Cloud Spells were particularly good anyway. You generally use them as like a side thing or as like an Air Mage. But as an Air Mage, you basically want to kill yourself because Air Mages are really frustrating to play. Um, if you want to have some confirmation, go check out my Deep Elf Air Elementalist video because that thing was a pain in the ass. Anyway, like, moving on. Uh, Olgreb's Toxic Radiance now does a little less damage, but no longer poisons the caster. This is an incredible change, and actually makes Olgreb's uh, Toxic Radiance one of the better spells in my mind now. Um, when I read this, I was actually confused, because that was the defining thing about that spell, and now this thing is just an amazing spell. It's a poison everything on the screen spell. It's as good, if not better, than, um, what do you call it? That other crap spell, Poisonous Cloud. So if you guys watch my series, you might actually see me using that a little bit more. Check if you got any idea on what that would affect, how that would affect player gameplay. Uh, it just makes this spell that was fiddly to use a lot more fun to use. So I was playing with it this afternoon, actually, and it's, yeah, it's fantastic fun now. Yep, great. That's actually good. See, this is the kind of change that is good. The kind of change that doesn't particularly make the game harder or easier, but it makes the game less goddamn fiddly. It's so damn good. That's a great change. I, I approve. This one's one that people don't like. Uh, they've removed the following cards and decks. So they've removed changes, summoning, wonders, defense, and oddities. Um, so the oddities deck was the one that was just like the random deck that floated around in the ether that you actually had to know the effects of. It's basically like a Zom deck. Wait, they removed that? What the hell? Huh. So decks will never have those random effects like Famine, Feast, uh, Zom, um, Exile. What are the other ones? I forget. Curse, Basically, famine, feast, focus, helix, wrath, zom. Helix was in every deck. No way. Uh, it wasn't in every deck. It was only in Odysseys and Wonders from memory. I don't remember Helix ever being drawn from any of my decks other than Wonders. Are you sure about that? I feel like Helix is only is only from the deck of Wonders. Helix and Dowsing, uh, and Mercenary and Focus. Those ones. No, nah, uh, Helix is Helix was in three decks. Helix would be in Deck of Changes, Deck of Wonders, Wonders and, and Odysseys. Really? I don't think so, dude. Because that means that when I was using, when I'm spamming my Destruction decks, there's a one percent chance I could get Helix, and I've never been Helix by using Destruction decks before. And I've well, played Memorize. One percent chance of getting Odysseys, and there was about seven cards in Odysseys, so you would need to draw about seven hundred Destruction cards. That'd be so, dude. Do you know how many Destruction cards you draw in a deck? Like, in a game, you draw, like, 350. I've played, like, seven games of Memlex. So that's, like, what, 2,400 cards that I've drawn over the de over the time? Like, come on. I would have seen it. I would have seen it. But I would know because I would never play Memlex again if it was Helix on random on random decks. Mm -hmm. So it's not the case. I swear to God, I know it's not. I have such a large sample size. There's no way. It'd be a statistical anomaly for it not to be. Anyway, uh, so the Monster Spell Control Lens, is that the one that knocks you back? Or is that the one that... Um, yeah. Oh, wait. Is that the one that throws around clouds, or is that the one that knocks you back? Throws around clouds. Yeah, so everyone can't throw around... No one can throw around clouds anymore. That's good, I guess. That that was really annoying, when you threw Freezing Cloud on an Air Mage, because the Spriggans have low health, and they can't avoid the cold, and they blew it in your face, and it was really annoying. So that's good. They got removed. Uh, but Wind Drakes can still uh, blow you back, and Spriggans can still smite you, so that sucks. Mm -hmm. 
And the Cloud Mage is, as always, shit. So that's, that's if you ever die to Cloud Mage, you're a sad boy. Real sad boy. I don't know anyone who's ever died to the Cloud Mage, because it basically does nothing. He does, like, the worst he can do is Corrosion Clouds. That's it. Right? Pretty sure that's the case. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if he's useless. He's useless, yeah. He's the worst well, boss. Actually, it's a random male or female now, so they are useless. <sighs> You're welcome. Fuck. <laughs> you fucked the checkers. <laughs> Your mm-hmm. reputation as a dev, it's, it's been destroyed. <laughs> anyway, the evasion ego from Randar blowguns is gone. Thank God, those things were annoying to use. Because you would basically use them as like protection, but then you'd forget to use them, and then they, you'd drop them eventually and forget that they ever existed. So removing them does nothing. Great. Thank God. Jesus. Zom won't ever vitrify your surroundings. That's kind of bad, but kind of good. Who cares? It doesn't really make a difference. It does mean that the pool of uh, reasonable effects now goes down, so you have a more chance of getting something that's bad, like, uh, you know, mutations or random delis. That's kind of bad, I guess. Uh, distortion weapons won't banish individual cracking tentacles, and ghosts of dead trees no longer get bonus AC. So those are just random bug changes. So that's been it for the 12th of June and the 25th of, tw- tw- 25th of May. Uh, do you have to say anything else, Checkers, before we piss off and uh, escape into the ether? Keep on crawling. Oh, I'm cringing. Oh, I'm stopping the recording. Fuck, I can't do this.